I think something that's on a lot of young people's minds today is uh, rent. Rent is really, really high now. I think it's higher than it used to be before. But houses are so cheap. I know some people have, I know people who have mortgage payments that are actually less than my rent. Uh -huh. So is it, is it obvious? Should people just be saving to buy houses immediately? Or what, what are our options? You know, Aaron, it's funny because these things go back and forth. You know, 10 years ago, there was a situation where nobody was renting because everybody was buying houses because the house prices were going sky high and so people were thinking that if they could get in on the housing market they'd get mm -hmm. rich so easily that buy, that actually renting a place would be stupid. Now everybody's been burned by the housing market and they're saying, oh well, you know, I'm never going to buy a house again. I'm just going to rent and that way I'm never going to get hurt by the market. And the funny thing is that it's had that effect that you were just talking mm -hmm. about where you know renting is now costs more than the mortgage payment that, you, that you'll pay on a house and so it's really pushed in a lot of places it's pushed the um, the economic incentives back towards, towards thinking seriously house, about right. buying the way i think about it every time i pay rent i think i'm basically like burning money i'm not building any equity i'm not going to buy the apartment uh -huh. i'm just there there it goes you know? Yeah. So my question is, um, does it make more sense to buy a house now then? Should people be thinking more seriously about buying homes versus renting? You know, it's always a personal decision because there's so many topics, there's so many things that you have to consider when you're mm -hmm. thinking about buying a place. You know, buying is a big commitment. If you bought a house and then next year found out that you were getting a new job in some other city, you know, you can't count on being able to sell that house right. in a month or two. Before you buy a house, it's really important to think about, you know, how committed are you to staying in that location? How much can you count on your financial situation being stable enough, you know, having a job that is stable enough that you pretty much are comfortable committing to that? In that, if, if you're not comfortable with that, if you're seriously thinking about moving, mm -hmm. then you know, even if renting is more expensive in the place where you live, it still makes sense right. because there's no long-term commitment. Another thing you really should think about is how comfortable you are with just all the responsibilities of home ownership. Renting is great because when the toilet breaks, you just call, someone, you just call somebody. <laughs> when the roof leaks, you call somebody mm -hmm. and they fix it. Uh, when, it's, when you've bought a house, that's your problem. And right. so even though your mortgage payment, if you only look at your mortgage costs, payment, exactly. only look at your mortgage payment, it seems cheaper, but when you add in those maintenance costs, mm -hmm. and you know, especially kind of the unexpected nature of some of those expenses, mm -hmm. uh, it can really end up being a surprise to a lot of young homeowners. Another big difference, I think, is if you're signing a lease for an apartment, you're usually signing for about a year. Uh -huh. About how long are you stuck with a mortgage? Well, a lot of the mortgages that uh, people get these days are for 30 years. Now, the fact is hardly anybody right. actually lives in their house for 30 years. I think the average length that someone owns a house is somewhere between five and seven years or so. Um, so you, one thing you can do is just run the math and say, look, you know, if I pay such and such amount in rent, versus if I buy a house and this is the mortgage, kind of compare the two and figure out kind of what, uh, what the situation is. You can count on your rent going up probably yeah. a little bit, at least a little bit, maybe a lot. Every year. Every year. You can count on it. <laughs> the nice thing about a lot of the mortgage payments that you get, if you get a fixed mortgage, then that monthly payment, it stays the same as long as you keep the loan. Although renting does give you more flexibility, like say if your job circumstances change, you could feasibly find a smaller, cheaper apartment. But and if you have a mortgage, it's not going to just go away. No, it's not. Yeah. And the thing about buying homes, and especially about selling homes, is that there are some big costs that go along with it. Unless you're planning to become a real estate agent <laughs> of your own, then uh, paying somebody to help you sell your house is usually going to cost you somewhere around 6% of the selling price. Wow, 
And wow. so even in a good housing market where prices were going up, mm -hmm. a lot of those profits ended up going to the professionals that bought and sold the houses mm -hmm. rather than into your pocketbook. That's another reason why staying in your home for a longer period of time after you buy it makes sense. Makes sense, right. Because you don't have all those transaction costs at the same time. Well, Dan, I think I'm going to keep renting for at least a couple more years, but thank you for giving some great advice about renting versus buying a home. Glad to help, Aaron. <laughs>